Hi, everybody. So my name's Justin Smith. I'm an assistant professor of computer science at Lafayette College. And I'm so excited to be here talking to you about my research, in which I explore how automated tools can help us communicate better fixes and, uh, more importantly, better strategies for fixing the bugs that they detect. So the thing that we strive for to do, strive to do as software to developers is to rise up to a higher level of abstraction. For example, we don't think anymore about moving electrons through circuits in order to just add two numbers together. Instead, we want to focus on the more important and more interesting higher level problems, like building bots that use hidden Markov models to automatically generate startups. <laughs> but the problem is, Many of our tools that detect defects in our, so our software systems are stuck in the dark ages. We have tons and tons of tools are, that are really good at finding problems. We have security tools, we have linters, we have compilers, we have API misuse detectors, we have static analysis tools. But these tools don't do a very good job of helping us think at a high level about how to solve the problems that they detect. To illustrate this problem, let's look at an example. So this is a common variety of error that students in my intro to programming courses might, uh, might encounter. Uh, so here the novice programmer is trying to store a value of 1.5 in an integer variable called thing. And uh, this might be, seem a really simple error to you, but imagine this programmer is new to type systems or new, new to programming or, or perhaps they're new uh, to processing. So the defect detection tool that we're looking at here is the compiler, which is finding a syntax error, and it's throwing up a big red flag and saying, you cannot convert from float to int. So this novice programmer, they don't know what to do, so they do what all of us do. They type this error message into Google. They click on the first result, which is Stack Overflow, and they see that someone else has had another instance of a very similar problem. So that's good. They go and check the accepted answer for that problem, and the answer says that they need to change the return type to float in order to return decimal values. Okay, so they change the return type of their setup method to float, and now they're in an even bigger mess than they were when they started. Okay, so what went wrong? First, there was no explanation. The defect detection tool told the developer, big red flag, there's a problem, but they didn't explain how they should go about fixing that problem. Second, there was a bit of a mismatch between the example we saw on Stack Overflow and the, this developer's particular instance of the problem. So on Stack Overflow, we used uh, variable names like mutate and new x and x, and in this example, we use variable names like thing and a method name called setup. So the, the developer has to do this co cognitively difficult task of finding a match between these two similar but different concepts. And finally, most importantly, we had different root causes. So the root cause of the defect here is there was a mismatch in the assignment types, the variable assignment, and the mismatch in the Stack Overflow example was a wrong return type. So I know you all have bigger, bigger problems, right? You're not worrying about converting floats to ints, but I would argue that your problems are kind of the same. When you get an error that doesn't make sense, you have to work out all of the low-level steps in order to fix that error. So what we need is to turn our error messages into something that, one, helps you solve the particular instance of a problem that you're facing at any given point in time, and two, teaches you a more effective strategy for fixing problems like that in the future. So that's what we need, and that's what we did. We built a tool that does just this. So what it does, our tool is called Matching Ref. It analyzes your code, and it analyzes the particular instance of an error message that you've encountered, and it first helps you to identify the root cause of the problem that is generating, that is causing that error to occur. And then it suggests an expert strategy for fixing those types of defects. So this is what matching ref would generate for the example that we've been looking at so far. And so now we're at that next level of abstraction up. Instead of worrying about the low level details of how we'd fix an individual problem, we can think about the higher level strategies that we would choose uh, to fix problems like it. Okay. And this tool or approach is not just for tight mismatch errors. Uh, so this is a mock-up of what matching ref or, the, or this idea would look like for a more complex set of errors 
for example, finding path traversal vulnerabilities and security, a security vulnerability like a path traversal vulnerability, and sharing an effective strategy for fixing that vulnerability. Okay, so here are a few places you can go if you wanna check out the tool. I hope that you'll try it out, if not only to just satisfy your curiosity, but it also in hopes that it inspires you to think about the tools that you create and the tools that you use and how you can help developers think more strategically and more abstractly about solving the problems that they, de that they detect. Thank you all. <laughs>